So I know we've talked about today earlier about how the situation is not great and uh, risk posture in general is, uh, definitely needs to be improved. So uh, I'm not going to talk about any tools or we all know about people, processes, tech and how it should be and how it should work. What I'm going to talk about is more conceptual and I'm going to share some of my experiences uh, that I have with crowdsourcing platforms and how that can help us to improve our risk posture across applications, obviously, because applications are always the, the main target and the weakest link in the whole thing. A uh, bit about me, who am I? Chief Information Security Officer, currently at MetaPack. Uh, MetaPack is a, sort of a delivery management uh, solution. We provide a SaaS platform. So what we do is we, we are merging carriers with retailers. So on one side, we have retailers. On the other side, we have hundreds and hundreds of carriers. So uh, from that point, it's quite interesting what we were talking about, the chain and your secure only, how, how secure your weakest link is. You can imagine how challenging that is because on one side you have retailers that are quite paranoid and then carriers which are not, <laughs> they don't really care. Um, uh, also, I'm doing an evangelist role for a crowdsourcing platform called Cobalt. I'm, uh, I'm doing pen tests for them. Uh, I'll explain a bit in detail later how that actually works. Um, overall, uh, I have around 13, 14 years of experience mostly on technical roles. So I've been security engineer and developer for, for a long time. Uh, but also my development experience is, is close to, uh, related to, uh, to security. I was developing security tools, source code analysis tools and fuzzers and stuff like that. So uh, to go through something that we've been talking about today already, um, yeah, it's not great. Um, I think it's interesting. it would be interesting to have a conversation in general. Why is it like, like that. I mean, what's the root cause of that? No one's talking about the root cause. We all know it, it's not great, but I don't think it's that bad. Uh, I think we are doing what we can in the infosec industry, but obviously we should do more, but we need something to work with. I think that's the main thing. And uh, someone mentioned KPIs and metrics. Yeah, that, that's the, big, the biggest issue for me also the last couple of years, what to measure and what, what's, what good looks like. I, I don't think anyone knows that basically. So that's why we need, we need to innovate and do something and try something differently, stop reusing known things. Um, so yeah, application security threat landscape is obviously changing. Uh, emerging technologies, we have loads of new things that we need to protect. That's one of the reasons why we're not so successful. Um, Find and adopt approach, again, as I said, I know loads of CISOs moving from one place to another just using same frameworks, same models, yeah, that worked before. Unfortunately, that's, that's not the case because every company, every business is completely different, has different processes, different culture, so we need to adopt security into this new thing. Skills gap, obviously, it's here and it's going to get worse. Um, I think long term we could tackle it through education and forming information security. Uh, uh, programs and stuff, but we need a solution now. Uh, I've been hired in my previous organization, so I was a CISO before I moved to Metzberg. I was in a fintech organization, and also I had loads of issues finding good people uh, for, for security roles. So uh, insufficient regulations, again, we've talked about it. For most of the organizations, that's a box ticking, ticking exercise. Yeah, checked, we've done it. Um, no one's enforcing it at the end of the day. It's all about, yeah, can you get in and, and sign off this for me? That's not the way it should be. And uh, we should cover, if you use the rule 80-20, the baselining and, and adopting these standards should at least cover these 80% and reduce the likelihood that we're going to be a target, although that shouldn't be our main, main goal, obviously. Uh, internally, so yeah, to, to conclude the external posture, I think too much stuff is going on, and uh, it's really hard to track all that. There's a definitely information overload, and uh, we need to filter this somehow and figure out what's important for us. Internal thing, internal posture, I think same thing. If you, if, you, if you work as a consultant and you see various businesses, I think early delivery is the main thing at the moment. Let's just get it out of the door. Uh, application, the whole SDLC, software development lifecycle, is um, extremely fast adopting security into it. I, I believe we all do the same thing. We do awareness and training with developers. So we have left and right proactive and reactive piece. 
I'm sure we do all of that, but most of us here probably who are doing CISO roles and high level roles now that we reuse again same things OS top 10 for web developers for this and that. That's, I think it's simply obsolete and we need to look at something else to be able to tackle today's threats. Uh, risk management workflows are really slow. Uh, threat modeling, not, I haven't seen maybe 5-10% of businesses that I work with where threat modeling is done properly to actually correlate a certain issue with certain business systems and then come up with the actual threat and impact. Attack surface discovery, as we all know, the, the biggest issue is discovering the data for locating it. The, protecting the data, I think, that is the least issue that we have. I think identifying all the data flows is definitely the biggest issue. Focus shift in firefighting, all the small, mid-sized companies know what I'm talking about here. So uh, yeah, you're jumping from one thing to another and it's really hard to stay focused and balance between strategic goals and tactical goals. There's always something going on. And uh, yeah, as I said, additional layers in scope. Uh, cloud, in example, most of people think when, when they move to a cloud, they've shifted responsibility to someone else. Uh, I, I personally don't think that's the case. I think it's getting even worse because you get the additional layer that you need to take care of to protect. You need to understand the new context. So uh, yeah, all that makes it really, really hard combining these internal things that are getting faster and faster and then external things where it's happening, the same thing is happening. I think we're in the middle and balancing between these two things is, is becoming really, really tough. Uh, from the pen penetration testing perspective, because I'm, I'm going to focus only on that now because we don't have much time, but uh, traditional pen tests, I think they haven't improved over time from the process perspective. Uh, do you use the same organization every time to do pen tests for you or you change them? That's up to you, but uh, what I've seen there's really weak integration into your processes. You get a report, email to you. You need to go to your developers. You need to go to, to all, all of your teams, assign these, raise tickets, explain how the remediation should be done. So it's a long-term process, and uh, we're going to talk about that a bit later. Uh, compliance, again, it's a box-ticking exercise. Same with everything else. I think pen testing for most of the organizations is just to tick the box. I haven't seen organizations improving because of pen tests. Okay, you reduce these risks, but then they show up again after a while. So it's, it's really important to somehow learn from all this and improve over time. Um, so is crowdsourcing an alternative? I know there are a lot of people that are quite skeptic about crowdsourcing, but the important thing to understand is Crowdsourcing is crowdsourcing your application security does not necessarily mean you need to do bug bounties like Google or Firefox. Uh, that's more suitable for big businesses with a lot of resources. Why? Because obviously you get a lot of noise that you have to reduce. But there are loads of other things that you can crowdsource and there are these centralized platforms, uh, plenty of them, even the US government is now sponsoring and funding some of them, uh, that are taking this noise reduction piece on to them and uh, helping you to speed up the whole process. Uh, you can fully integrate, I've, I've done, so from, from my perspective, technical, what I've been doing with, with Cobalt, in example, I've done pretty much everything from the SDLC perspective, except the awareness and training piece. I've done architectural design reviews for clients as a freelancer, as a crowdsourced uh, researcher. I've done a pen test, I've done source code analysis. So all the, these pieces are doable. You, you can crowdsource all of this, and we'll see why, why I, I think it's, it's much better. The important thing to note here is, is what I've written down at the bottom. So I think White Hat research for 2016 showed that it takes 146 days average for a business to remediate a critical web vulnerability, which is unbelievable. It's half a year to remediate one vulnerability. So uh, 17 days is what I've pulled out from a, one of the crowdsourcing platforms. And the reason why I think that this huge difference is here is because of this integration piece. And we're going to move to that now. So uh, stage integration scenario. I know people think, yeah, if I open my, my application to everyone in the world overnight, that's going to be a disaster. Uh, who's going to control it? How people just don't know how to handle that. So the best scenario that I've seen in practice, uh, and it works, was starting with on-demand assessments. So same as you're doing normal pen tests through a, a, a companies, vendors that are providing pen tests. 
It's flexible, uh, controllable timeframes whenever you want. Reduced noise, obviously, because you get only few researchers from certain pools. Uh, the huge benefit of this is because you can target specific people that have specific skill sets. And I think that's the biggest advantage. So I'll give you an example. We did a lot of uh, payment gateway assessments. And we have pools of people with exactly payment gateway experience. And, and they are focusing only on that piece. So uh, I think that's a huge benefit. And then the traditional companies can't, can't compete with that. Um, second step, obviously, when you reduce this noise and you improve, is uh, conceptual buy-in, if you like the, the, the whole process. And your maturity level grows, obviously, through the process. You can then go into a stage bug bounty integration. What that means is you open your application only to a certain number of people. So crowdsource platforms are controlling this for you. So they basically crowdsource your app to, let's say, 50, top 50 researchers. After six months, they open it to 500 and then to 1,000 or whatever. You, you never need to go like full public bug bounty, but you can go through this controlled flow where a lot of noise gets reduced through these stages. Um, so the, the biggest thing, I think, be, before I move to this, is this integration piece. So what it gives you, uh, so I know Cobalt can do it, and, and Hacker One and Bug Crowd uh, are also working with that. You can integrate this whole process into your ticketing system. So let's say you use Jira. You have security champions in your development teams. You literally integrate this through the centralized platform where all the communications are, are happening in real time with your ticketing system. So basically, whenever something is discovered, it goes directly into your team, and you have a curator who's assigned for a certain program, and he curates this for you. So he can do a threat modeling with you. Uh, these people are skilled specifically for these things. So I met people that are, are amazing. I've seen tools that I've never seen before. Uh, that's also one of the things. These people have their own tools, their own fuzzers, their own uh, source code analyzers. Uh, most of these people are working for big organizations like Google or Cisco or whatever, and they do this in their free time uh, simply to stay on top of things because when you're in environments like that, you get sucked up into that world where you use just certain certain set of technologies. So uh, from an upsec future perspective, what we are talking in, in a panel discussion, I think, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, give me a few more minutes. So more granular set of requirements, definitely. So we need playbooks. We can't focus on everything. We can't remediate everything. So we need a playbook approach. You need to do attacker profiling based on your business and based on what's the most important thing for you. Uh, Case-specific assessments, so that's what I've seen is more and more happening, which is quite good. Uh, through this crowdsource platform, I get requests from clients where they ask for specific assessments, not just why I do a pen test on my application. They have cases where they want to do role-playing stuff, and I think that's, that's definitely where, where the whole AppSec should go in the future. So, uh, yeah, takeaways. Agile SDLC needs agile security. We need to... We need to make sure that we are fast enough. I think speed is the biggest issue for us at the moment and balancing between strategy and, and tactical stuff, as I said. Crowdsourcing and security uh, myth, I know loads of people are skeptical about it. As I said, that I, I don't see a difference between that and, uh, and traditional pen testing. Simply no difference. Uh, they all sign NDAs. They all certified with different, uh, uh, with different standards and, and uh, and certification, so uh, definitely. And lastly, transparency builds trust. So once you go through all this process and you're transparent, you simply prove to yourself and to your clients that you believe that what you're doing is, is secure enough.